What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining us today on the channel. Uh, we have a huge topic to discuss today. Uh, this is something that affects uh, pretty much everybody in the world, but we wanted to uh, specifically address how it affects DJs, um, and that is the issue of, uh, you know, supply chain troubles, uh, shortages, and everything uh, surrounding the idea of being able to get DJ gear uh, and other, like, electronic musical instruments. Uh, in our hands at all uh, you know we're all living in unprecedented times we've heard that hundreds of times by now and uh, it doesn't look like the smoke is clearing uh, any time in the immediate future as far as uh, you know having things just regularly accessible in the way that we're used to thinking about it and so uh, this isn't necessarily a doom and gloom story but it's not all ponies and rainbows either this is something that we wanted to talk about on passionate DJ because it will definitely affect your ability to get things quickly and on time possibly at all and um, so I wanted to have somebody on the show who could really uh, talk about this from a place of experience and so today on the channel we're talking to Alex from the DJ hookup I know he spent at least the last few days probably longer than that uh, furiously scribbling down notes on this subject especially because we wanted to get this information out to you guys uh, before the holidays so uh, this doesn't have to do specifically with the holidays it's going to extend beyond that so if you're watching this in February or something like that uh, please keep watching because uh, you know this is still relevant information uh, but if you're watching this as we publish it uh, you're really running down to the wire on when you can order stuff for the holidays so Alex thanks for coming back on the show man thank you for having me so we had you on the podcast oh it's probably it's well over a year ago now maybe two years um and so you're a return guest but we also work together a lot on uh basically anything to do with dj hardware uh being that you have access to uh, all kinds of dj hardware and uh i make content it made sense for us to start collaborating and so that was kind of what started a lot of these conversations that we have on the side and uh you came to me and said hey there's a lot of stuff about the supply shortage stuff that DJs need to know that I just don't think that they do. Uh, so, yeah, maybe you can give us like the elevator pitch real quick for uh, people who aren't already familiar with the show as to who you and the DJ hookup are. And then uh, we can start talking about uh, what you have to share with us. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, so DJ hookup. Um, we sell DJ gear to people like you, like me um at all stages of their dj career and venues and event promoters so on and so forth um you know we're kind of at a crazy time uh o over the past year we've seen the situation evolve quite a bit and i have been uh maybe sometimes privileged maybe sometimes uh, whatever is the opposite of privileged uh to have a front row seat to this whole thing uh, from kind of two angles. I'm in the meetings with the manufacturers who are telling me literally what's going on in their factories in China and at the ports and in their distribution facilities here in the US and so on and so forth. Uh, and then I also, of course, my company serves uh, thousands of, like I said, people like me, you, and the people listening to this show, DJs, music producers, and so forth. And so, I have seen this whole situation um, unfold from from both sides. Uh, I've, uh, where we are, kind of as 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 literally the bridge between the manufacturer and the um, the end user. Um, it's really our job to kind of smooth those things over and look for opportunities to uh, add value and and. Yeah, really understand situations and make make the best of them. Yeah, and, and I'd like to share kind of how to navigate it, um, what mind sh mindset shifts you need to have, um, what's actually going on, perhaps how we got here, uh, and then also what are some of the opportunities and silver linings. I, I, you know, every uh, challenging time has its own positive. So, um, like you said, this is not a doom and gloom thing. It's just a adjusting reality thing. So I, I got to say, Alex, we really appreciate your uh, expertise on this subject because you're you're definitely uniquely qualified to to speak on this just because of your your particular position in the DJ industry and and with hardware in particular. So um, I, I guess I want to start uh, way at the beginning of the shortage. You know, m most of us 
DJs or, or people in general, like we keep hearing about supply shortage and equipment shortage and delays, but is there like a, an ocean liner stuck in a canal somewhere that has a bunch of Denon Prime 4s on it? Or like what, it, what is actually happening and how does that affect us uh, at the ground level? So after a crazy 2020, which we're not going to go into at this moment, um, which was a record year for electronics consumption, in February of this year, um, as most of the world began to slowly open up, we began to see the first signs of shortages. Um, we didn't know how long it would last, how deep the impacts would be, but like every two to four weeks since that time, we've seen, I would say, a notable um, exacerbation, a deepening of those shortages. Um, by June of this past year, most of the major brands in our industry had substantial to, I would say, severe back orders. And by August of this year, nearly every brand had, had raised its prices due to increasing materials costs, uh, logistics costs, and you know outright scarcity of items. Um, some of them were actually on their second, third rounds of, of price increases by this point. Um, and that kind of brings us to today. Um, like I said, um, I, we, we've thrown around the word unprecedented a few times. Uh, I think you and I are about the same age. I'm 35. We've seen some crazy stuff happen in our lives. In 2001, uh, you know, there was 9 11. In 2008, there was a complete financial meltdown, um, which resulted in the worst economy since the Great Depression. Um, but through all of that, neither I or anyone I know was unable to get stuff. It really felt like the problem of not being able to get stuff was either a problem of different generations, like a previous generations, or at least just in, you know, the developed world, like we had, it really seemed like we just completely solved the problem of getting stuff. Like maybe we couldn't afford the stuff. Yeah, maybe not financially, but like logistically and logically. Yeah, exactly. If, if you had if you had the dollars burning a hole in your pocket, you could get you could turn those dollars into stuff. Um, and last year, something very interesting happened. Normal people like you and I couldn't get toilet paper. <laughs> and of course, that got resolved quickly. But today, people like you and I can't get a CDJ 3000. So, you know, going back to 2019, if I had the money in my pocket, um, and I said, I want a CDJ. I could have numerous retailers like me. Uh, I said, so I'm, I'm using myself in both sides of the transaction. Anyway, <laughs> if someone like you needed a CDJ, uh, you could come on, uh, uh, you know, go on Google and a bunch of retailers, um, such as the DJ Hookup and many other uh, companies out there, would hit you with their ads. And the only question for you really is just to decide where do I want to buy my CDJ? Uh, and fast forward to today, if you have the money burning a hole in your pocket and you announce, I'm willing to pay twice what you're asking for a CDJ, there's no one to sell it to you. Um, you can pre-order it, um, which many companies aren't even taking pre-orders um, because it's so overwhelming to, to handle. Um, we can talk about that more later. Um, but if you want a new CDJ, um, as many uh, event promoters, venue managers, and so forth, people for whom that is like a thing that they need to run their business, not just like a, a hobbyist item, um, you know, they're not price sensitive at all. They just can't get them. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I can tell you that the folks at the manufacturer are working their absolute hardest to get the products to the market. But even the few pieces that do come in are generally going to people who pre-ordered in June, July, August. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a completely unprecedented situation for people in our age range and younger. Um, and it's the first time that regardless if we have the money, we just can't get the stuff we want. Have you noticed that it's, is it like particular lines of gear, like uh, cer certain actual pieces are unavailable? Or is it like if if Denon 
if any Denon is unavailable, all Denons are unavailable. If any, if the lower pioneers aren't available, they're all unavailable. Or is it kind of a crapshoot? I would say if you asked me this question six months ago, we could maybe do some kind of like pinpointing, um, you know, like, like for instance, there was a shortage of LCD screens. So not all controllers have an LCD screen. And if the product you were looking at had an LCD screen, the likelihood that there was a shortage on it went up substantially. And th that probably is still a factor. But what has happened is, like I said, the depth and breadth of, of the shortages has really just increased, where at this point, it's not a, you know, a single category, a single manufacturer. I think a lot of manufacturers put on a really good face for a really long time, um, but just about everybody at this point um, has come to terms with the fact that you know we all we all inhabit this one Earth that really only has at, at, at its core one set of natural resources. You know, when when Pioneer or Denon or whoever makes a product, they don't necessarily stamp and print every microchip they don't necessarily right so th right so they're buying a lot of assembled components and then you so past the a lot of the shortages where they're ha where we're seeing them is you know beyond raw materials in assembled components so maybe we'll we'll talk about it but you know microchips epic huge shortage in microchips and m chips are in absolutely everything right now uh, from cars to microwaves our computers of course that we're talking through and the dj gear that we use to play gigs um you know so uh, we, we we talked about lcd screens and and many other things along the way so whether or not it's uh, kind of localized or generalized, I would say at this point and probably more or less for the foreseeable future until the overall situation really improves, I do think it's going to be more of a generalized shortage um, where you're going to see it across most manufacturers, most price points. I was going to say the only reason I ask is because uh, so if I can golf on a slight tangent um i'm a i'm a gamer right and i'm a halo fan so a new halo game came out and i went okay this is this is time for me to to upgrade either i need to get a new the new xbox that came out or i need to uh, it's cross platform so that means i can get it on pc instead of the xbox so i went well rather than buying a whole new game system which is by the way hard to find right now I'll just upgrade my video card and then I'll be able to play the game optimally right here where I'm sitting at my PC. Uh, knowing that there was that shortage also affecting video cards, but I went, uh, all I knew was the, like the top tier video cards were just unavailable, but I didn't want a top tier thing. Uh, I just wanted to upgrade. Well, what I didn't realize was there was no such thing as a budget video card anymore right now. Like, the stuff that I thought I would spend 150 to 300 dollars on is now six, seven, eight hundred dollars, and that stuff is twice that price, and so it just it scaled across the entire spectrum, um, and I didn't know if there was a similar effect to to DJ gear or not um, when it comes to you know is is the lower you know is the 99 dollar Hercules controller uh, just as rare as a CDJ 3000 for example. Um, a CDJ 3000 is really hard to build. There's a lot of stuff in there. And because it's such an advanced piece of hardware, because it requires so much stuff, um, and you know, we're talking about screens, chips, different kinds of chips, um, motors, all kinds of stuff. A Pioneer can't ship you um, a CDJ 3000 that's missing a screen. They can't say, hey, I owe, I owe you one screen. Right. So, so if any single thing, if any of the probably, I don't know, I imagine there's 200 inputs that go into a, a CDJ 3000. Um, if any single thing is not available, the whole thing is unavailable. Generally, the more advanced the gear, the higher the likelihood that it's going to experience shortages and delays. Um, but secondarily, 
when we talk CDJ 3000, we're talking about like the industry standard item that's on every festival stage in every nightclub and so on and so forth. And so the demand for that versus something uh, from perhaps a uh, lesser known brand or, or a model that people can't just like rattle off the top of their head, um, there just might not be quite as much uh, demand and insistence for that item. Um, I do think we're really lucky that we have, uh, while we have seen price increases, it, right? I'm saying we're lucky that we've only seen price increases um, cause, cause I think the manufacturers know that DJs are price sensitive yeah, yeah. and so, you know, on a $2,200 product, we've seen a price increase of like a hundred bucks. And I think, and while that may seem like offensive, I think we're actually lucky, like you said, yeah. that it's merely been like 5% or something like that, like that the manufacturers are really looking for ways to uh, minimize the blow as much as possible. Whereas like you're saying in other categories, um, uh, yeah, like video cards, 2X, there's a, there's a restaurant I love down the street, seafood place, uh, like Mexican seafood place, Marisqueria. Um, they don't sell octopus anymore because the price of octopus has gone up 3X, Oof. right? So like the fact that our stuff has gotten a little more expensive to put in perspective, I think it, we're relatively lucky it, to, to the extent, to that extent um, that I think most of our industry is, is cognizant of the fact that uh, people like you, me and the listeners are not really going to, uh, you know, we're not going to have it if the prices go up like 50%. At, at least not yet. At least not yet. I mean, who knows what happens in the future, depending on, you know, hopefully this only gets better from where we're at right now, but there's also a possibility that it gets worse before it gets better. And so, yeah, I mean, we, we might see a situation like the video cards you described. So I'm going to ask a question and I, I, I hope you take it from the right place <laughs> where I'm trying to ask it from, um, especially because I think it really, the onus is more on the manufacturers than a distributor like uh, uh, the DJ hookup. But, you know, you, you mentioned that this was the the biggest or one of the biggest um, demand years on record for this type of product, probably because lockdowns and lots of people found new hobbies and that sort of stuff. Um, you know, we're entering 2022 now, so pandemic's not new. And at this point, shortages aren't new. Um everything's been a little bit disrupted. I guess I'm wondering, like, did, did the manufacturers like not see this coming? <laughs> does it, does that make sense? Like did it, it, it's a little surprising that they didn't get a little bit ahead of the game or maybe did they, and this is just even further than was expected. Yeah. I think this is a 10 out of 10 question and it's probably why we're recording this show. Um, to really understand, I, 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 I think understanding how, how we got here is, uh, illuminates the situation. And I think, um, helps someone understand just how, how, how to navigate it. Um, so if you've been shopping in the past 10 months, you've, um, you've probably seen these shortages. Um, shouldn't have someone seen this coming. Couldn't we have ad adapted to avoid this? Um, so for this, we need to take a step back and um, understand what's happening behind the scenes. Um, since the beginning of the pandemic, I said I wasn't going to get into 2020 uh, earlier. Um, but since we're going here, we, we got to go back to the beginning of the pandemic. And, um, and the other thing that I, I think is really important to address is that there's absolutely nothing nothing that's unique about the dj equipment in industry and we have zero insulation um from what's going on in the world um that is a concept that's uh, surprisingly I, to me um unintuitive to 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 a lot of the people in our industry there you know i had a guy say to me the, the other day like uh, man, I really should have ordered this CDJ in June. I just thought like they're always available. And I just thought that 
I mean, why would this be on of it? And I, you know, my thought was just like, what about a CDJ is different to you than a Ford F-150? Like in, ter- in, ter- in terms of like uh, things being unavailable uh, to buy, like there's just nothing uh, like <laughs> spiritually, metaphysically, I, I don't know what the word is. Like there's nothing unique about our products other than we use them. Like we're, we're just not special in that way to have our very own shortage. Um, and you know, although the work we do is in bars and nightclubs and banquet halls, um, the, the equipment that we use is designed by people on the West Coast or in Japan. It's manufactured in China and Malaysia. It comes to the U.S. on giant container ships that you know, where on the next container, it's you know, you have tractor parts, and then uh, the one after that, you have like beauty supplies, and the one after that, you have hubcaps. You know, like. Our stuff is is really just a one in in a countless sea of uh, of things that that are available to humans through this global supply chain. If, if I can interrupt for just for a second, yeah. I, I think one thing that uh, at least for me might help explain the disconnect between like DJ equipment and something like uh, like a car, like the, like the F one fifty, is like the I think we think of like the manufacturers of DJ equipment keep promoting and releasing new gear and new announcements and new features and OS updates and all that kind of stuff as if nothing has changed. And I'm not saying that they shouldn't. And I'm not even sure that that's different than what the car, the automotive automotive manufacturers are doing. But I think that that, you know, I, in my head, I think, oh, Pioneer made like a zillion CDJ 3000s and now they're going to sell out of that inventory while they're catching up during the supply shortage on building them. But I think that that time uh, to manuf- from manufacturer to the end user getting it is probably shorter than someone like me realizes, uh, probably because the um, – audience is smaller than something like the Ford F-150, which is the biggest selling vehicle ever. But um, so, I, yeah, I don't know how much it differs from that, but I, th- I think that there's a certain momentum that you feel that comes along with the automotive industry. You know, there's always a 20, 2021 model and a 2022 model sitting on the lot, you know, it's and it's new, even if it's not, you know what I mean? And I think that it just mentally feels different. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot to to say there, and that we can unpack that wouldn't even be specific to a time of shortage. But you know, these products, there are engineering and design and research development teams that are working on, you know, like the XDJRX3 that just came out. I guarantee you, that's something that was in the works for years. And you know, um, supply chain crisis or not. You know, th- th- there's years and team, glo- you know, multiple global teams that make a product like that possible for somebody like you or I to use at, you know, at a bar gig down the street. And so to us, it's kind of this mundane thing. We, we again, like we take it for granted. We, we take all this stuff for granted, but, you know, it's kind of a miracle uh, of, 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 of engineering and design and whatever um, to have something so advanced come together. It takes so many people, uh, so much knowledge, so many resources and and so forth. And so, you know, most likely that product, what the first charts or the first sketches were began long before anyone heard the words COVID even. So, um, so yeah, I mean, the fact that it, unfortunately, by the time it's ready to come to market, that it unfortunately lines up with a time like this, I think they, as much as anybody else are making the best of, of, of what they've got. Um, besides that, you know, like if you think of of it from, from a manufacturer's perspective, like, um, kind of have to sell what you got. And, you know, if, your, if the supply chain for an old model is screwed and you can't ship them, but 
you know, due to some circumstances, um, you have a new model that you happen to have some product that you're ready to ship, well, then let the world know that that's ready and available. Um, and then the last thing that I'll say on, on this subject of, of like, how can they keep announcing new things if, if, if you know, even the old things aren't available. Um, the new things are also only kind of available. Like if you've ever tried to order a new piece of DJ gear, depending on the manufacturer, depending on how big the hype is around it and so on and so forth, like it's not like Apple where uh, Tim Cook says, hey, here's the new iPhone and you walk into the store the next day, you know, there's a line down the block and everybody gets an iPhone. <laughs> um, generally with DJ gear, the production runs are much more limited. Uh, and like, even in previous times before shortages and whatnot, you know, you might be waiting for a new release, you know, three, four, five, seven months, whatever. So now you add in this situation. And so, you know, there may be some people that get some product within like a month of release. And then the next batch will only get it in three months. And the one after that in six months. And then the one after that in six months from right now, not, not like, anyway, you, you get where, where I'm going with this. My, my point is, my point is um, in our industry, delays around new releases are not new. Um, and what I can reliably tell you is like anything else, whether or not the marketing campaign for its release is recent, um, it's likely going to be affected by very similar um, supply dynamics as uh, as something that was maybe announced uh, right before COVID started. I purchased a coffee table um, last month. My coffee table ETA is February. And given what I've seen in our industry, I'll be 0% surprised if it gets postponed past that. Um, am I canceling my order? No, because if I wait to order in February, my pre-order unit will just go to someone else who ordered today in December, uh, or rather in, no in November when I actually ordered my, my product. And now I'll just be waiting for my coffee table until May or June. So as much as I hate it, I want my coffee table and therefore I'd prefer to pre-order, um, and you know, going 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 back to your question, like, couldn't we have seen it coming? Um, the folks in the DJ equipment industry, uh, or the you know, in this case, the the folks in the in the furniture industry, or the folks in the automotive industry, couldn't we have done something about it? Um, we we the DJ hookup are professional middlemen, right? So our job is to get products from manufacturers who design and make gear to people like you who use it and provide a layer of support, last step logistics, and, and, and you know, just a great experience um, that the manufacturer can't or doesn't want to provide. Um, you know, that's going to be true for us, Zappos, uh, Nordstrom, Best Buy, anywhere you, sh you shop for stuff that other people can buy, uh, that, that, that other people make. And at our level, uh, while we're working very hard to help uh, DJs, customers adjust and navigate the shortages. Um, there's nothing that I think we could have done. We just meet every week and say, okay, the situation has evolved like this. This is what we are inheriting from kind of up the supply chain. Given the most recent reality, um, you know, what is the best that we can do for DJs? Right, so uh, you're almost entirely reactive, right? Like the 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 shortages in the supply chain, uh, the the issues happen way earlier in the supply chain before they even get to you, probably most of the time. So you can react, but there's also a delay. You know, it's like by the time you know there's a shortage, there's a shortage. <laughs> yeah, we're really the last link in the supply chain before it gets to you, um, and the real issues are happening way earlier. So yeah, I don't think we could have done something about this. But how about the general we? Um, DJ equipment, sound lighting, electronics, um, and the, all the industries that support us. Could we have done something collectively to, to avoid this? And I think that's a completely fair question. Um, and to really answer it, 
we got to go back before the shortages started and understand how exactly we got here. Um, I'll try to do this quickly. I'll do, I'll, 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 I'll do my very best. So in late 2019, um, I think somebody ate a pangolin or something and that person got sick and then they got a bunch of other people sick. And next thing we know, all over the world, people are getting sick and our best scientists are telling us, hey, bad news, a lot of people are still going to get sick. Um, and together, society with our governments, we decide, hey, if everyone is gonna get sick and a lot of people can die as a result of that, let's put the world on pause, stay at home for a while, slow down rate of people getting sick, right? We were all there for that, we all, we all know this. Um, so at this point, a lot, you know, allow me to kind of talk about the economics of that for a second, because that, that's ultimately what this is all about, right? We're ultimately talking about supply and demand, availability, and so forth. So as a result of everything shutting down, as a society, we go, uh-oh, a lot of people aren't going to be able to make a living uh, if they can't leave the house. And also, the goods and services that those people produce, they're not going to get made. So we're going to have to do without them. And it doesn't just mean that the guy who's going to come over to look at my flickering light bulb isn't going to come over. It means that the quality assurance engineer who inspects a shipment of mm. truck parts from China isn't going to come into his job. And those truck parts aren't going to get the trucks back on the road. And because there aren't trucks on the road, you know, the, the stuff that we need delivered um, isn't going to get to where we need it to, to go to. And so these second and third order effects just start piling up and up and up and up. And as a society, we go, oh, crap, this is going to be bad. Uh, like, and so if, if you pay attention to the stock market at all, you just see a flash crash, just like, yeah. bam, collapse. And um, yeah, I mean, we're, we prepare for, uh, for a very long winter uh literally and metaphorically uh you know I, I i quite literally march of 2020 i had a meeting on uh, all hands meeting with with our team at the dj hookup and i said guys this might get really really bad like our sales might go down to 10 percent of what they used to be um we're gonna do our very best to hold out and like make the best hopefully you know hopefully we're pre prepared enough for this uh we're not going to be able to survive it forever uh many businesses didn't survive uh many manufacturers shut off their production completely because they thought like hey there's not going to be anybody to buy this stuff everyone's going to be broke um like a lot of rental comp a lot of car rental companies sold off their fleets of cars because they're they still have to pay um you know, they, they have to pay, uh, what are they called? The loans on the cars. And if no one's renting the cars, there's no money to pay for the loans. So they're like, liquidate liquidate that, right? If, they, if no one is traveling, uh, nobody's renting these cars, get rid of the cars, right? And so we see all kinds of people preparing for this lo long, deep winter. But then in April, something very interesting happens. We as humans realize we're not so weak and we start adapting. We say, hey, you know what? I'm not gonna spend money on gas uh, since I don't have to actually like, physically go to work. So those $300 I saved this month, I'm gonna buy a new pair of headphones I need for DJing or gaming. Um, you know, now, and also I, I actually have the time to do those things now since, right. since I can go out anyways, right? Like. Um, and number two, um, our government, realizing that a lot of people won't be able to pay their bills without going to work, writes a check to everyone. And while for some people, this is an absolute lifeline that puts groceries on the table and keeps the lights on and keeps the water running and so forth, turns out that for a lot of people, they just got a bonus. They're still doing okay. They're doing right. their job via Zoom or maybe they're essential, they're a truck driver or a warehouse worker or someone that works in you know, essential retail and they just got a nice $1,200 bonus. And you can buy a lot of stuff with $1,200. Um, I, I quite literally remember a situation last April 
where a gentleman came in, um, or rather came in, uh, I spoke to him on the phone, um, and he was looking to buy, he's like, yeah, I want to get into DJing. I said, great, what's your budget? He's like, honestly, budget isn't even an issue. Uh, and I forgot what I recommended to him, but it was probably something over a thousand dollars. And he goes, oh, oh yeah. I, I didn't even know DJ equipment goes that expensive. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, um, <No> child. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's like, you know, I got this check and I gave half of it to my brother. Um, and I have, and the other half, I have it. I just figured I'd buy, I'd, I'd buy a, a new DJ gear setup. So this guy had $600 in his pocket and he thought that was enough to say that he has no budget for DJ gear. I, I mean, like, like infinite budget for DJ gear. Right. He, he thought anything I could offer him would, would be so much less than these $600, right? <laughs> so I, I'm just sharing this story to say that like for a lot of people, they, you know, that money was burning a hole in their pocket. And so the the stock market promptly comes back. My 10% speech from March, uh, you know, sales might drop to 10% is now replaced with a new speech of guys, we are so insanely blessed to have this problem. But I need everybody running on 12 out of six cylinders to keep up with what's going on um in terms of you know as a society people buying buying more stuff and you know at the risk of like romanticizing a difficult time i think we did something we the general we humanity society did something incredible we adapted to this horrible situation and it almost like ushered in this new like stuck at home renaissance so yeah 2020 ends up being the highest recorded sales year of electronics on record um, AirPods, which are maybe the most popular non-cell phone electronic device, it's already a huge business. In 2020, AirPods sell 90% more than they did the year before. Like it's, it, it, that's insane. Like it, it, they sold, I think, 114 million units. Air, just AirPods is something like a, somewhere between a 10 and $20 billion business. And they have like three models. You know what I mean? And they, they fit in your pocket. Like, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think the entire value of like the knife, I, I remember like looking this up. I think the entire value of like the knife industry is like less than a billion dollars. <laughs> three, three pairs of, uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, maybe, maybe I read the wrong statistics or whatever. But yeah, I mean, like three models of AirPods, like 10 to 20. Not now, I mean, uh, but that's just AirPods, right? Like now take into consideration all of our electronics and the electronics in gaming and the electronics in photography and everything in between and cell phones, et cetera, et cetera. So highest recorded um, electronics uh, sales year in history. And, you know, as much as we all learn to make the best of a tough situation, we all have new AirPods. Uh, Supreme just dropped a brick with their logo on it. Um, you know, we're all looking for the big payoff for our patients, which is the reopening. You know, we just get, you know, they're telling us that the vaccine, either, you know, first versions are, are already available or it's coming like any day now. And the reopening for us DJs means we get to play our bar gigs. We get to play our nightclub gigs. We get to play our wedding gigs. And so toward the end of 2020 and increasingly into early 2021, the world slowly but surely starts to reopen and you know as much as a lot of us have upgraded our gear with our stimmy checks a lot more of us a lot more of us have saved that money because 2020 is actually the highest savings year in recorded history i didn't realize that at all i had no idea i guess it makes sense though i mean you saved more money in 2020 than any other year since anybody kept track of how much money is being saved in a year. That is crazy. It's, it's so fascinating to try to break that down. It's like the economy is a disaster, but also everybody has ex exposable in uh, disposable income, but you don't have any money, but you have a bunch of money. It's like, 
I, I'm I'm imagining trying to describe this time period to like my grandchildren, economically speaking. It's going to be a long discussion. I think we're going to be figure, you know, figuring it out and and uh, processing the impacts for a long time to come. Um, so but when, when things started to open back up, did you start to see? Did did the uh, the sales data change for you? You know, oh, I can start doing weddings again. It's time to to do upgrades, or you know, did were were you able to see a definable you know dip or raise in that graph? So complicated question, right? Now that we're ready to go to work, now that my residency is back, now that the couple gave me a deposit on their wedding, now. I will upgrade my gear. Now I'll buy those speakers that I had no purpose for last year. Now I'll get the pro level controller with the XLR outputs that I need um, because I'm not just streaming on Twitch where my previous controller with only RCA outputs would have done the job. But remember, we DJs are not special. This isn't a DJ gear shortage. This is a global shortage of almost everything. So around us, every other industry that's coming out of hiding, just like we are, is doing the same thing. They're buying stuff that they've been putting off buying, despite it also being a record spending year. Okay. And after this crazy roller coaster of shut everything down. No, turn it all on or overdrive, you know, starting in April. The manufacturers who've been working on overdrive to produce more stuff with fewer people, oftentimes with less efficiency because now they have to run smaller teams, socially distance in the factory, blah, blah, blah. They really start gasping for air because we as a society are telling them, oh, you thought we bought a lot of stuff in 2020? <laughs> those were just the spenders now that the world is op opening up now and now that we have the vaccine now all the savers are coming back we're all coming back at once and you ain't seen nothing yet right so at the be we really start to see the beginning of these shortages um in the beginning of 2021 so in february there is a freeze in austin texas where i am right now shuts down the entire city for a few days. A lot of people don't know this, but the computer chip industry is extremely concentrated in just a few places. Yep. Taiwan yep. and Austin being two, two of the top ones. Um, so, well, all of a sudden, one of your top two producing cities, which means multiple manufacturers, can't produce the chips that go into all of our stuff. When I say all of our stuff, I mean all of our stuff, right? There are literally unfinished trucks sitting on assembly lines rusting because every car basically has a computer in it now and they can't finish them. Then there's a giant fire at Taiwan Semiconductor uh, Corporation or company, whatever it's called, the number one producer of chips, not, not by a little bit, but by, by like a mile. Like, uh, yeah. And just at the moment where we need every last chip we can get like as a world we take the huge l we take a huge l like we need all these chips more chips than we've ever needed before and then we have these like stumbling blocks and this consumption engine the engine that gives us dj controllers and coffee tables that i'll be waiting on till february <laughs> just starts breaking down the engine starts seizing up overheating and everyone at every level is doing what they can to get their piece of it to work just a little bit better. But the pressure is so intense, the demand is so high, and the stumbling blocks are piling up that the manufacturers at every level just can't keep putting on a good face and saying, oops, sorry for the technical difficulties, we'll be right back, right? And they start making sweeping adjustments. Um, so, you know, some of the things that we've seen happen over this past year, prices have, of course, gone up. Um, you know, when retailers like us order a new product, those new orders have projected fulfillment dates. Like right now, for a lot of products, if we order them in, in December, 
if, if this was 2019, two years ago, two years ago, um, we could place an order and probably have the product in hand in a week. Well, right now we're being told, okay, yeah, we, if for your new order, you probably are looking at a, an ETA of Q2, Q3 next year. So that's somewhere between between April and and uh, September. Um, and of course, and those are just just best guesses. What if there's another fire at Taiwan Semiconductor? Right. right. It's just it's assuming like, everything continues at its current. Um, you know, the one thing that I'll I'll give my team, of, if I can just do a quick plug, that I'll, that I'll give my team a, a, a pat on the back for, um, led by my co-founder Natalie. Um, we started taking the shortage really seriously around April and May of last year before the summer, which is when like everyone realized like, oh, so this is what's going on. So we placed orders for lots of products uh, through end of year and beyond, understanding that we may not be able to run a neat little just in time operation where, you know, we just we, we place lots of small orders and we you know, we don't hold a huge inventory and what and whatever, you know, we have a, a one of the major manufacturers in our industry, a name that we all know, um, that just stopped taking orders. Stop. So we're talking about a huge company, one of the biggest in our space. And they just say, hey, there's no point in for us to take these orders. It just creates a ton of administrative work for us. We have to keep inventing these ETAs that we don't have. You get frustrated, we get frustrated, no orders. When it looks like we might start getting product again, we'll let you know, which is insane. I mean, there's full yeah, teams of sales cool. people, marketing people, logistics people uh, who are being told, don't sell anything, don't market anything, don't fulfill anything. That's There's absolutely not nuts. Yeah, yeah. Like when I heard about this, I organized a meeting with the national sales manager and I'm like, hey, a little drastic, don't you think? Um, and what he said to me was, um, you think we're big, right? Well, for this market, sure, we're huge, one of the biggest. But in the world, are we Ford Motor Company big? Are we military contractor big? So when those chips become available and we need the same chips that go into a Ford F-150, who do you think is getting them? <laughs> Not the company point. making stuff for, for performers at parties. So he's telling me we have a choice. Our, uh, you know, and, I, and our engineering team has, has really like worked through this problem. Either we can switch to B quality <clears throat> chips, sabotage this brand that we've been building for decades, screw over our customers that put their full faith in us, and he's, he's like, believe me, we've, we've investigated that option, like maybe a B quality chip, we, maybe we could find one that's good enough. And he just said, like, our engineers have looked at the available options, and we just can't find a, a B chip that we could justify putting into our product. Well, that's and, ad admirable in itself. I mean, as it, you know, it, it almost seems like that would be an easy thing to do is put whatever will get the product moving into it. Um, but then you're, yeah, you're, you're almost shooting yourself in the foot by putting out an inferior product. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's a judgment call. That's a decision to be made. And he said, uh, and ultimately that conversation ended with him saying like, ultimately we're deciding to tough it out and wait. And we're asking you to do the same. And we're asking you to ask your customers to do the same. Um, you know, and I, just to be clear, this, like I said, it's not just chips. Uh, we're talking about LCD screens and octopuses and and uh, everything in between. Um, so, um, you know, to answer your question, couldn't have we been pre better prepared? I just don't think so. It's one of the most craziest economic happenings in our modern world, like you said, uh, in its own completely different way. It, it, it might be as crazy as COVID itself. And I honestly think it's the kind of thing now that like people who are 14 now, um, you know, the age that I was when 9-11 happened, we'll be able to tell their kids about this. Like, I remember in 2021 when my family had to wait for a new washer and dryer for six months and their kids will look at them like, what? You guys can get <laughs> stuff? It's so easy to get stuff. Look how much stuff there is. Man, I've never heard of not being able to get stuff. 
All right, pardon the interruption, everybody. Just wanted to give you a quick reminder that if you like to support Passionate DJ and what we do, a great way to do that is to check out our merch. Go to passionatedj.com forward slash merch. And whether you just want a cool design to wear as a DJ or you want to support our logo and support what it is that we do here on the show, uh, that's a great way to do it. Once again, go head on over to passionatedj.com forward slash merch. And now we're going to get back to our conversation with Alex and get into some real solutions to some of the problems we've been talking about. So, so yeah, so far we've talked about, you know, the, the major issues that, that we're seeing and sort of your perspective as an insider, as, as the sort of middleman, as you say, uh, where you get to see, um, I'd say, all sides of the, the hardware industry for the most part. Uh, being uniquely positioned there, uh, sharing us a few anecdotes from the inside, um, and kind of really describing the scale at which uh, we're we're experiencing all this. So uh, now that we we have talked about all that, uh, like you said, how do we get passionate DJs out of the weight club and into the get cool stuff club? Um, do you have some advice from your unique position? Uh, to talk about this uh, the very first thing you know um, a mantra perhaps I would install at this moment is that this year and you know while this is all going on uh, availability is the deal um, if what you want is available don't take it for granted I won't blame you for doing some quick price shopping maybe spend a day or two but if you spend days or weeks, you know, price shopping and deliberating and twiddling your thumbs, whatever, um, waiting for the pro- expecting the product to be waiting for you when you're good and ready, um, that's a losing strategy. It's the age <laughs> of the compulsive shopper. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I perhaps not compulsive, but certainly decisive. Sure. Like. <laughs> It, 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 this is the moment where it really pays. I, I'm a I'm a total analysis paralysis guy. I get stuck on on decisions for ages. I've had to get better about it, and that's a skill that right now it would behoove you to to improve. Um, this year, the deal is getting the product in a reasonable amount of time, not a discount. It, it's 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 a crucial mindset shift. A lot of us are professional deal shoppers, including myself, and you know, and definitely our customers at DJ Hookup who know that we've built a brand over years. I mean, it's called the DJ Hookup. We hook you up with deals, and that that that's and historically those deals have come in the forms of of discounts, but discounts generally are the byproduct of surpluses. You know, like I said, never been a problem to get stuff until it is. And this year with the severity of the shortages, prices increasing throughout the supply chain and how few of those items are actually become available. Discounts simply aren't, I'm not saying they're all gone. There's certainly some, Um, they're just not, they're just not what they were in previous years. Are you running into a lot of people who are, are kind of surprised by, you know, they show up and they, they've been researching this for the last month and they're like, all right, I'm finally ready to pull the trigger. And they're, they're kind of shocked to find out, like in my case with the video card that, oh, like this thing just isn't here. <laughs> yeah. So this is my world. DJ gear is my world all day, every day. But for most people, you know, you buy a setup and you use it for two, three, four years. So when you come back to somebody like me, you're coming back with all of the assumptions that got installed in your mind two, three, four years ago. And maybe the experience you had two, three, four years before that. It's a real serious mental hurdle for a lot of people to overcome where like they think it's some kind of like marketing ploy or just like an excuse or something like that and it's like well hey man if you're looking around and nobody has this item like don't you think one of us would if it were possible to just like for it to just come to be don't you think one of us would want to earn that sale and 
right. take that money and get that money from you. Like you all uh, have a gentleman's agreement to not sell them for a while just to artificially raise the price. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, seriously. And that that's like that, that I'm not saying that's like a thing that is everybody has that kind of thing, but, but there, there are definitely some people who think that something like that is going on. And, you know, hopefully if, if you've got, if you listen to the first half of this, I think you, you might split this into a couple parts. Uh, if you didn't hear the first part about how we got here, I would go back and listen to that. If you hear all of that and you and you still are entertaining a conspiracy theory about how DJ equipment prices uh, are increasing, I don't know what to tell you, but <laughs> Yeah, like I said, so for right now and for the foreseeable future, the the availability is the deal. Is the deal. If you can get some discount on top of that, that's gravy. Uh, I invite you to to look for it. Um, you know, come talk to us. Talk to talk to other companies that you like. Um, you know, and just be decisive. You know, like act act quickly. Um, I, I've seen so many people. You know, a lot of people's shopping processes, they'll take like a month to buy something and they'll check in with us every couple of days, be like, uh, how about now? Is it, has the price gone down now? Has the price gone down now? Has the price gone down now? And then they get to the end of the month, they're ready to pull the trigger. And we're like, that product isn't here anymore. And they're like, what? You know, I was just price shopping. And at that point, all we can say is, sorry, you can pre-order uh, and they end up paying the same amount, but now they have to wait weeks or months. So availability is the deal for the current context. A lot of people fiercely overvalue the discount. Like they won't buy what they need uh, because they can't get $75 off today, but then they'll go and rent the thing two weeks later for a hundred dollars <laughs> or they'll okay. miss yeah. or they'll miss a gig or they'll have to split a gig, uh, their earnings from a gig with their friend who has the, the gear, right. right? And if they had just bought the thing at full price, just getting the gig or keeping all the money would have more than compensated for whatever they saved. And so there's this weird, I'm sure psychologists have some kind of name for it, but there's this weird kind of thing that a lot of people have which is like this kind of perception that like the money you save is worth more than like the money you stand to earn. Um, and so, yeah, I'm not telling you that left is right, up is down or, what, or anything like that. Uh, I'm just telling you, consider the full value of the gear that you're getting uh, versus waiting weeks or months to save some amount of money specifically at the moment of purchase because that money is the exact same color green and it's worth exactly as much as what you might earn by, you know, in, in one of the scenarios that I previously described. What, um, what about if the, you know, you want a piece of a particular piece of gear um, and, and it's just straight up not available, like say it's a CDJ 3000 or, you know, um, some other kind of upper tier uh, controller or something, something complex, uh, it's obviously not going to be in for a while. Uh, what do you What do you do? Does the DJ wait forever? The number one thing I can tell you is focus on what you do want, not what you don't want. Uh, what I mean by that is, if your product is backordered with the manufacturer, you'll know pretty quickly. You won't be able to find it anywhere, and your first instinct might be to wallow in this like but I want it now and, and, you, and people start pouting and they get paralyzed because they can't get it. And it's a natural response, but it's completely counterproductive. This thing of like, ah, oh, I just, I don't wanna pre-order. Like, I don't wanna wait for the thing. Like, um, and so they take n no action and they get no closer to getting what they want or need while wasting as much time and mental energy. So forget about what you want, but can't have, right? Like let, let if, if there's one thing, you know, both in terms of like getting gear, but also keeping your mind in, in good shape, like the, the world just isn't gonna conform to this impossibility that you want to force. Instead, let's focus on what you actually want um, given where we're at. Okay. 
So I think now that we're in a productive state of mind, I think we can basically follow one of two paths. One is that you say, I know exactly what I want and I want to get it as soon as possible, which to be clear, as soon as possible in the current environment might be in a few weeks or months. The other um, path would be more along the lines of, I have a need for, uh, for a thing that does X. I have a preference for this model, but ultimately it's more important for me to get something that fulfills that purpose now, even if it's not the exact item that I want. And depending on which route you're going, you're going to have some different strategies and, and opportunities. So uh, real quick, I, I have a, a question from a viewer, if that's okay, that's that's pretty relevant to what we're talking about sure. right now. Yeah. Um, and Nick says, uh, do you feel that people are buying up or buying down versus their given budget or switching brands when a model or feature set isn't available or are people just more so waiting on the sidelines hoping for availability? Do you have a gauge for what people are tending to do? Yes. Um, DJs are varied. Um, so for some people, it, it this is a hobby. For some people, it's a career. For other people, you know, the gear is like really a business input, like a, a nightclub or or a, an event promoter or a, a stage manager, whatever the case may be. Um, and so as varied as, as varied as, you know, DJs and, and, and the people who use DJ equipment are, um, and, and the businesses that use DJ equipment are, um, as, as varied as they are, there are just as many kind of like uh, different behaviors and uh, I actually wrote some notes down that, I, that I'd be happy to, to share in terms of, you know, what, yeah, how, how I would proceed given kind of which of those scenarios you are in. But, but yeah, we're seeing all of those things happen. Um, so, so yeah, let, let's jump into it. Um, if you're dead set on a particular item, um, like let's say you do backline, uh, you know, like you, you fulfill, you fulfill, uh, gear for stages. Y you don't have the option of saying like, Hey, um, I want a CDJ 3000, but I'll take a Denon SC 6000. You, th that's not your job. Right. Your job is when someone comes to you and says, I need a CDJ 3000, you go, Oh, here it is. And that's it. Right. Um, uh, and whatever there's there's other situations some people are just like very brand loyal and whatever the case may be um for the person that is dead set on a particular item there's one word one word you need to embrace right now you've heard it here before and we've talked about it but you can't can't drill it any deeper pre-order 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 okay I will be the first person to tell you pre-ordering is not fun. Waiting for my coffee table till February, knowing that it might not even come in February. I do not enjoy paying for something that I do not have that I will not be able to actually use for months. Right. It's the exact opposite of the one click buy button on Amazon. <laughs> where you're like, right. ah, done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I want my coffee table. I want that exact coffee table. I have zero confusion about that. So I know that pre-ordering is my best course of action in light of the world that I'm in right now. The number one mistake you can make is I'm going to wait for it to come in stock. Mm. This is something, I have had this conversation over the past year, maybe hundreds of times. Unfortunately, my rate of converting people out of this mindset is probably abysmally low, but I will try yet again here. <laughs> I, will, I will do my very best. I feel attacked already, but go ahead. <laughs> the worst strategy, if you know that you want this item 
and you want to get it in your hands as soon as possible is I'm going to wait for it to come in stock. Here's what happens to, I'm going to wait for it to come in stock guy. Guy comes to us in November and says, I want X. We say, great. The ETA is January. Want a pre-order? And the guy says, no, thanks. I'll wait for it to come in stock. And every day, especially if it's a popular product, there'll be four guys like that, that come in and will walk away saying, I'm going to wait for it to come in stock. And then a fifth guy who comes in and actually places a pre-order. So what happens when we finally get a limited delivery in January? Well, you the set fifth one aside. Guy, yeah, the fifth guy who bit the bullet and pre-ordered is likely, I won't say he will for sure get his product fulfilled, but he is likely to get his product fulfilled because sometimes we don't even get enough to fulfill the pre-orders. But even then, but even then, you know what I mean? The people who pre-ordered are still gonna, you know, the, the, the operative term is as soon as possible. It doesn't mean as soon as any of us would like necessarily, but it's as soon as possible, um, which is ultimately, you know, the best that we can ask for if we know that we want a, a specific thing. And then in those rare times, where we get a few extra pieces. If this product is popular, I'm telling you, this is like Drake tickets going on sale at Madison Square Garden. They are <laughs> gone within, Bam. yeah, they're gone within minutes. And so I'll wait for it to come in stock, guy. All of the I'll wait for it to come in stock, guys, come in because they either saw a post on social media or maybe they signed up for back in stock alerts on our website or whatever. Um, they, they come in either best case scenario later that day or in a few years, a few days and they go, okay, it's January. You said the ETA was January. I'm ready to buy my thing now. And we say, what are you talking about? ETA the, was January. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like the people who ordered in November got the stuff today. <laughs> you didn't want to do that. Now you have to pre-order for March. And then if this guy learned his lesson, he'll do precisely that. And his unwillingness to wait for January and November will now cause him to wait until March. And in some, unfortunately, still all too frequent, in my opinion, cases, that guy will not learn his lesson and he will say, okay, I'll be back in March. And we say, we wish you all the best. So the lesson here is pre-order, pre-order, pre-order. If I can take a second to plug the DJ hookup, um, pre-order management is hard. Like I gave you the example of that, of that manufacturer, because even if you give people an ETA, they still check in with you like, Maybe it's a little early, huh? You know, like, uh, or, or, or like you tell them early January. So they'll be there like January 1st, 559 AM. Like, where is it? You know? And it, like, it's, it, it's hard. And, and, you know, it, it's one of these things where number one, only kind of, I would say the more serious players in the industry can justify taking pre-orders because we actually get the allocations and fulfillments once products come in because we pre-ordered because we pre-ordered with the manufacturer like i said um six to eight months ago and so forth but yeah i mean ultimately by accepting pre-orders we become professional anxiety managers <laughs> and, uh, yeah. so which is why a lot of companies have just stopped because their thought process is like well if these are drake tickets going on sale at madison square garden we'll sell whatever comes in whenever, and then just whoever gets them, gets them. Mm -hmm. We have chosen to continue taking pre-orders because we feel it's our responsibility to give you some degree of reliability and predictability through this time. Um, like if, if there's anything we can contribute, it's hopefully that. And also we, you know, we know that a lot of people are not just buying stuff for their hobby. They're buying stuff for their business and we take the responsibility 
of, of making sure that you can build your business uh, with the products that we sell reliably. And we take that very seriously. So um, yeah, a few of the things that we have, we allow people to pre-order with just 5% down um, to secure their place in the pre-order line. And uh, then we notify them when the product is actually, uh, when it actually arrives. Um, we're super committed to transparency. So if there's any updates from the manufacturer, good, bad, or neutral, um, we share them any kind of ETA updates. Um, maybe one thing we can link to in the show notes is we do maintain kind of a small library of ETAs. Uh, if you go to the djhookup.com slash ETA, it's just a sheet that we put together to give some transparency into when things realistically are coming in. Do you deal in used gear or uh, I know you you do the occasional open box, uh, stuff like that, refurbished? Uh, what are the other options there? If you are open to other items, um, the most obvious option is to look for in the kind of um, like new refurbished o- open box kind of space where, yeah, we definitely carry those kinds of products. Um, we do not carry uh, heavily used items just because for us, we want everything that some, somebody buys from us to be of a certain quality and a certain reliability. And we don't really want to get into the game of assuring people that this piece of crap isn't too much of a piece of crap kind of, you know, like, yeah, yeah, it's got five years of use on it, but, (laughs) and we have been making every kind of effort to get in every kind of defensible factory refurbished item and and, and thing like that um, over the past year. That said, realistically, unless your item just got sold out, you know, market wide, usually, within a couple of days, like once all the new product is gone, all the kind of like new blemished, destock, refurbished kind of, yeah, anything in that kind of like, like new category, not, not quite new, it's usually gone pretty quickly afterwards. Um, but, you know, so then after that, you have the option of substantially used gear. Um, like I said, as the DJ hookup, we don't deal in materially used gear. And personally, I'm not a fan of buying uh, substantially used electronics just because there's too much that can go wrong under the hood. And you can't, unlike buying a used car where you can take it to a mechanic and they can really do like a deep inspection and give you kind of a, you know, pretty reliable assurance that, yeah, you're buying this used car off of this guy that you don't know, but our professional opinion is that this is in good shape and everything under the hood is in good condition. Um, nothing like that exists when you're buying, you know, five hundred, seven hundred thousand dollar DJ controller. Um, but if you do want to go that route, um, maybe another thing we can link to in the show notes is um, we have a guide for selling used DJ equipment. So as the buyer, I, you can, I, I would uh, maybe offer check that out, look at where we're sending people to sell their gear and then follow them there and then buy it off of them. If you want to go, if you want to go the substantially used route. Um, Then if you're open to other models, I think one of the biggest opportunities available to you is work with pros at a trusted dealer. Um, I know that sounds self-serving. I mean, frankly it is, um, but also we're not the only show in town for whatever reason, you don't want to stop by the DJ hookup, um, but it's what we do. We design setups. Um, we think about use cases all day, every day. Um, and you know, you only have to make this purchase one time. We have to think through this purchase or something similar, like 50 times a week. So not only can we give you recommendations of functional alternatives, but we can do so with the insights of what's actually available. And this might be the time to basically relax your iron grip from the brand you're 200% committed to. Uh, if, if there's one thing DJs, I would say, are known for, it's being purists. You know, techniques are bust, or pi- depending on the era, or like pioneer or bust. And yeah, I mean, those are great products. And at a time when innovation moved so slowly, they kind of were the only show in town. But today, in almost every category, for almost every software platform, at almost every price point, we have multiple really excellent options, um, each with their own kind of user groups and reliably good support. 
and legitimate manufacturer's warranties. And so, yeah, I, I think the first strategy is what's the direct alternative for the product that I want from another brand, like, right? Um, you know, we discussed this in CDJs, you have this in standalone units, you have it in controllers at different price points uh, for different software platforms, et cetera, et cetera. Speakers, all of them. Uh, what's the direct alternative with a different logo on it? Um, the next strategy is, okay, if I can't get exactly what I want from the brand that I want, what's up market from that brand? Because at least that more or less, what's up market from the model that I want? Because that at least ensures that you get everything you wanted without making any compromises. But you got to be ready to stretch your budget a little bit. Obviously, you're going to get more products for, you know, for your money. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you'll, get, you'll get what you wanted. You'll pay more. You'll get more. Um, for, for some people that, that, can, that can swing it, viable alternative. Um, the third strategy is, okay. I can't get what I wanted. What are the core functions that I need and how can I get them as cheaply as possible? The idea here is that, you know, for a lot of people, this is just like a temporary unit. Um, and once the thing that they really want becomes available, um, they're still gonna get that item. And so this will just become their backup rig or their home rig or their small event setup. Um, and yeah, for this to work, um, and this is something that we help people with a lot, because a lot of times someone comes and they say, I want this, right? And they have a difficult time articulating what about that piece of gear exactly they want, right? And so one of the things we help people work through is like, what are your must haves and what are your nice to haves? Um, and then, you know, and then we can strip out some nice to haves, um, prioritize saving money, and help you find something that gets you your must-haves and maybe even a few nice-to-haves as well. My, my um, wife has to do that all the time as, as a realtor. She, <laughs> she'll show five, six, seven properties, and then she'll go, okay, <laughs> it's time to write your list of must-haves, and then we're going to only see showings that make this list. And then inevitably, the next time around, they'll send her a bunch of listings that don't make, that, don't have, make those same bullet points. And she's like, no. You made a list. Let's follow the list. Yeah, man. I mean, and the, the cool thing about this is right now there are some awesome options. Like I know you and I, you did an awesome review about it. And around the time of the review, we had conversations. But man, like the Newmark Mixstream Pro, what That's you're incredible. getting, what you're getting for I think like six hundred bucks or whatever is like crazy. It's crazy. Oh, you got one in your hands. Yep, got it right here. Yeah, this thing, uh, what five five ninety nine? I think it retails for. Yeah, and, I mean uh, it's just it's like a little uh, Prime Go without a battery. Just about. I mean it's uh, <clears throat> the functionality of it, especially running on uh, engine software. You know, it's like the stuff uh, even on the budget end uh, isn't isn't messing around anymore. Yeah, like the there there's a this is a completely viable and and decent strategy. Like you, it's not like. Uh, you know, compromise doesn't mean like uh, if I can't have the flagship, the only thing available to me is trash. Um, <laughs> lastly, this is a fun one. This is, this is I think, a, a cool strategy that it, depending on kind of we usually feel it out. But like if, if we feel the person is open, is open minded and really looking for uh, new ideas for, for gear, it, you know, I'll call it the wild card strategy. Like, what is the absolute best bang for the buck, funnest option that I wouldn't have considered if I could get the exact item that I want? But since I can't get it, like, I'll be open minded. Like, let's get weird with it. <laughs> yeah, let's get weird with it. Like, what do you got? Right. And so, like, maybe it's like the last generation version of some super uh, advanced item. And like you can save a ton of money on it where you wouldn't have been considering um, neither that brand nor like the previous generation or anything like that. But now you're looking at it and you're like, I can save a thousand bucks and this thing was a flagship like a year and a half ago. 
and it does all of it. This is awesome, right? Like, you know what I mean? But like when you're just stuck in like, uh, I need this product mode until you break out of it, it can be hard to see that. So um, yeah, the, that, that we, we do like to show people some of those kind of like wild card alternatives or like dark horses, like, I, you know, like a lot of people don't know this, but there's a, a European brand that's kind of not talked about that much or yeah. whatever, or, or this man- manufacturer that, that we don't talk about that much or, or this item that the manufacturer makes that, or, you know, like we still have a few units from, from uh, the last generation, whatever. So yeah, th- there is that, like, let's get weird with a wild card option, um, which can be a great way to get something awesome that you're really going to enjoy using. Um, and you won't have that like buyer's remorse, dirty feeling because you don't have to measure it necessarily like as a direct, like what on my checklist from the exact, th- the exact thing that I wanted lines up one for one with what I ended up getting. Right. Um, right. Like I said, this is what we do. We're here for you every day. Um, for those that haven't been to the website, uh, like our original innovation back in 2010, um, our original innovation back in 2010 was putting live chat on every page of our website. And that's still what we do. Um, we have people, you know, professionals available to talk to you all day, every day and to advise and assist with the kinds of things um, that, that we've been talking about today, helping you find alternatives, helping you navigate the situation, uh, the, the shortages, et cetera. Um, we also, um, since we have for a lot of popular products, we realized we're just having the same conversations over and over and over again. So we started to put together a repository of like expert picked alternatives to some of the most popular mo- models. If you check out the djhookup.com slash alternatives, uh, again, we will link to that in the show notes. Um, and you know, that's a evolving, evolving document, but yeah, you, you can see like, we actually meet <laughs> and our sales team will, will discuss like, Hey, when someone asks you for this and we all know that it's not going to be available for four months, what are you recommending? What are you recommending? And then we put together like a list that we feel is like, okay, we think this is like the best list of items. And a lot of the considerations that you and I are talking about, like, well, this is going to be your upmarket option. This is going to be your downmarket option. This is kind of your dark horse. You know, if you are kind of um, changing course um, in terms of not getting the original item that you wanted, obviously go somewhere that has a, a good and honorable return policy. I think we currently have the longest return policy in the industry, 90 days. Um, I have a question from Dre. He says, what does hardware and software support look like during the face of this? These shortages have hit the IT industry heavily, and I'm interested to know how this would affect support in the DJ world. Do you have any insight as somebody who leads a team uh, who uh, probably deals with some level of uh, customer and tech support? Um, I think you know, there's two types of support, right? There's like product support and order support. Uh, in terms of order support, I can tell you, I mean, I can't speak for anybody else except for my own team. I know that we take our responsibility, like I said, as the custodian, whether it be of a pre-order or whatever the case may be, like we accept the need to be professional anxiety managers and and we try to do so as gracefully as possible. Um, in terms of um, product support, um, I don't think I can say I've seen any kind of degradation uh, either at the retailer nor the manufacturer level. But beyond that, you know, keep in mind that we live in a time of like user groups and user forums. And so a lot of times, like the moment you have a question or you have a problem, like 60 people before you have had that problem. And, um, you know, you can go to a professional support person, but a lot of times what they're doing is uh, a a very advanced technique. I I call, let me Google that for you. (laughs) And uh, and then reading to you what the first result is. Um, I mean, because honestly, that that solves the problem a shocking amount of the time. (laughs) 
So, um, yeah, I mean, th th those are just some things to consider. But, I mean... Did you have to uh, change anything uh, business-wise as uh, in the face of the pandemic as far as, uh, you know, changing your policies towards telework or anything like that? Uh, so, our team actually is, like born distributed right like that's that's one of the things that i think it, that's unique about the dj hookup is we're a digital first company we didn't come out of a catalog we didn't come out of like a uh you know a, a brick and mortar store that you know built a website and then built up the website um so we really embrace digital and the tools that come with that first that's why we've been able to um pass on the discounts that we have over many years because we aren't carrying this kind of legacy overhead. Um, so we run just a, a tighter leaner ship and, and, and our uh, customers get to benefit from that. I think the biggest thing is like the warehouse. Um, and, um, you know, for a while we stopped doing, um, we do have a, a warehouse that allows pickups in the Chicagoland area. Um, for a while, obviously early in the pandemic, that became a no-go. And then subsequently, um, you know, it became like a masks required kind of thing, et cetera, et cetera. And so like, it, that's obviously very important to keep people safe. But for the most part, um, our team has been embracing remote work for, for a long time and, um, yeah, just because of the way we're built digital first, it, I think, yeah, I, I don't think anybody, I don't think any of our customers saw the impact of that or, or felt any kind of difference. Alex, I do appreciate you making the time to have this conversation with us. I know that this has been a lot to research and, and talk about, and I know that uh, this whole project has probably uh, worn you out, but I do have one final question that comes from my co-host Mo. And uh, he asks, what positives have you seen come out of all the madness of the past few years? You've heard the first part of my, my TED talk about our, our, our stuck at home renaissance. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I think that is fascinating. And I think people will be studying that for a long, long, long time to come. I think, you know, there's this one trend in our society, which is to just poo poo kind of everything and, and be like, well, we're bad at this and we're bad at that. And like, you know, like, uh, and everything just sucks, right? Like there's this one, especially amongst, you know, a portion of, I would say like millennials and younger, especially, it, you know, there's, it, it's this like new version of nine, like in the nineties, it was like, nothing is cool. Everything is just like, meh. It, it was cool to be like, everything is meh. <laughs> and then like now there's this other trend of like ah everything's terrible everything sucks blah 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 uh again if you heard my my whole spiel earlier i think if when the dust settles and we reflect on this time i mean i don't know man i i'm blown away i i feel crazy blessed for for some of the opportunities that have been presented to me. Uh, we've had to work harder than ever before, for longer than ever before. But the way I see that is like, you choose the problem, right? Like those are, I would rather have those problems. I would rather have the problems of, you know, when I have to come to my team and say, guys, we need to be, firing on 12 cylinders and i think it's only going to last four weeks but then it lasts like four months i would rather have that problem 10 out of 10 times rather than what i originally thought would happen which is that our sales plummet to 10 percent or whatever i'm really grateful to people that were able to be a bedrock of positive energy and positive initiatives through a difficult time. If you do have any like uh, gear that you're looking to offload right now, use DJ gear. It basically, there's never been a better time. So we actually just published uh, the, we 
We have a guide that we have released every year called the Ultimate Guide to Selling Your DJ Gear. We just published it for the 21-22 year uh, and updated it with things like, you know, what you can, how you, you know, how you should price your used gear, where you should sell it, um, how to avoid being defrauded, how to close the sale and just avoid avoid tire kickers and so forth so if you are looking to offload some gear uh, put some money back in your pocket that is like a, a, a pra practical opportunity that's that is um available to people today that's uh, all the questions that i had um it's been a very insightful conversation uh once again it sounds like the the lesson definitely is pre-order 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 if there's something that you um, are dead set on getting uh, and, uh, you know, in, in a lot of cases, you're going to have to wait, and that's just the name of the game right now. Uh, but we appreciate uh, both the insight and the, uh, the practical tips that you uh, came to share with Passionate DJs today. Um, yeah, well, first of all, I, I really want to say thank you to you, uh, Mo, Tony, you know, all, all the people that comprise the Passionate DJ team. I know you guys... I mean, you guys do this for DJs, straight up. Like, there's, uh, you, 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 there's no uh, Helix Matrix sponsorship at the beginning of this, <laughs> where they're, you know, just dumping a, a, a ton of money on your head. Right. Um, and I really hope people see that and appreciate it and 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 value it. Uh, I know that I do. I'm a fan of the show, and and it's uh, definitely an honor to be here. Uh, it, DJ hookup started this company in 2010. Um, we are the highest customer rated company in the industry. Uh, 4.9 out of five stars, 6,000 plus reviews over 11 years. They can't all be my friends from high school, I promise you. Um, we operate from a place of insane gra gratitude and privilege to serve DJs through every possible um, situation, whether that be market is good, market is bad, you know, gigs are open, gigs are closed. Um, we don't take a single person for granted that comes to us. Um, and, uh, you know, we just keep asking ourselves, okay, given what's going on right now, what's the absolute best we can do for DJs and holding ourselves to that standard. So if you haven't checked us out and you might be in the, in the market for DJ gear, um, just stop by. Uh, like I said, we're on live chat all day, every day, real humans behind there. And, um, and yeah, we're, you know, we're here to take care of you uh, and all the creators, make sure you subscribe to these guys, support them. Um, and uh, yeah, man, uh, make David Rich 2022. That's that's <laughs> what I'm gonna do. Make David Rich 2022. Yeah, here, here. Alex from the DJ Hookup, uh, thank you so much for joining us. The DJ Hookup sells DJ gear to their friends. They are the highest rated uh, DJ equipment retailer online. And Alex, thank you so much for joining us and telling us what we need to do to keep on spinning. Peace.